uh, so we're back for our uh, newest video, um, which is going to finish up the end table. So uh, we're going to go to uh, File, right? Uh, set Project, right? File Set Project. So whenever you come in for the uh, for the new day, right, to make it to work on an already existing scene, um, you just want to make sure to go File Set Project, right? Um, and in this case, I just got to find it right there, Project One, right? Um, you kind of save it wherever you need to save it, right? So we'll hit Set. There we go. Um, but that's what you should always do when you first come in Maya um, after you haven't worked in it for like a day or something like that and you want to work on your projects more. You go File Set Project, right? And you find it. You don't open it, right? You just click on the select the folder and hit Set because it's that whole folder directory. And then, of course, when you go File Open Scene, you see how it takes us right to Scenes in Project 1. There we go. And there's our end table model. So we'll hit Open. There we go. Remember, don't don't save when this pops up because that's going to want uh, to try to save this new, the, uh, the empty scene right there. Continue. And there it is. And of course, because um, we've been uh, saved our reference image in there, right, uh, in that project as well, in source images, it knows where to find it. That's what's great about setting projects, right, um, is it allows you to um, uh, not only have everything in one folder for that related project, but any images, um, it'll know where to find them, right? It'll know where, to, when you load it in, if you've set the project, you load the scene in, it'll know to show these. It'll know to where to find them and say, hey, load this in. Um, if you don't do that and you're moving to different computers, you have to kind of reload those things in, which it, uh, when you have a lot of them in there, it can be a bit of a hassle, right? So that's the great thing about projects. Um, so at this point, what we really want to do is we have our bevels from last time, right? Our bevel tool. And you guys are going to see the bevel tool plenty this semester, right? Uh, we are not done with beveling, right? We will see it on more models and more scenes and more projects. Um, but it's a great place to get us a good start and build something that's not too complicated, but still gets you to learn some fundamentals, right? Some fundamentals. Uh, remember one of the biggest things, Alt-Left for Rotate Camera, Alt-Middle Mouse Button for Move Camera. Remember the middle mouse button is a scroll wheel. You press it down like a button, not a scroll wheel. Um, and Alt-Right Mouse Button does zoom, right? Scroll wheel technically does zoom if you use it like a scroll wheel, but it's a jumpy zoom. So we prefer Alt-Right Mouse Button, right? It's a much smoother zoom. So Alt-Left, Middle, or Right Mouse Button. Just think that and boom, you got it down. Um, all right. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to work on this drawer here now. Right? We want to create this drawer. And there's going to be some more beveling at the end, but I usually wait to build uh, to do the beveling after I've built the drawer. It's just that's easier to work with this without bevels, right? Beveling is generally something you want to kind of do at the end, right? It's actually easier to do primary modeling without the bevels. Um, and the bevels are the kind of thing that you really can add at the end. So bevels are kind of something I usually put when I'm close to done with a particular part of the model, right? Like I already had the shape, the leg, so I was like, all they need to complete them is the bevel. This needs more of those. That's why we did not bevel that in the last video. Now, one of the cool things I wanna show you that's neat um, because uh, we haven't gotten that far in yet, but what if you wanna hide or show stuff, right? Now, technically Maya does, when you go to the display menu, it does have a hide and a show. And we'll talk about that more as we go along. Uh, I'm not really gonna talk about it quite yet here, but there is hide and show. But these really work um, specifically for the object or specifically for some bases, right? So if I did display hide selection, right, it'll hide that, right? Uh, of course, I can go to display and I can go to show. Now, if I have multiple things that I've hidden, show selection will only, uh, you'd have to have it selected. You have to be, have an outline. We'll talk about that more later on. But since it was the last thing I hid, I can just say show last hidden and it brings it back. Uh, you can even go as far as, you know, say hold down right mouse button for face mode and I can grab a face and I can go to display, hide, hide selection. It actually works with faces, right? So you can hide specific faces. Uh, if I go back to display show, you see how I can, we don't want to show all. Do not use show all. That will unhide your viewport cameras uh, and anything that you don't uh, want hidden. So it's better to actually, particularly if you're doing um, objects, to either show last hidden if it was the last thing you hid or use outliner to show selection. We'll talk about outliner more as we go on, um, but probably not today yet. Um, show all components, right? That's actually what you want to do to show your polygons. But you'll notice you have a normal hide and show feature inside of Maya that works fairly well. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna hold down right mouse button, right? Because remember, even though technically we have our selection types right over here, right, object, vertex, edge, face, um, we prefer to use the right mouse button, the marking menu, right? So if you hold down right mouse button, it brings this up, right? And there's other stuff down here we'll talk about more later on, not, not today, but later on in the semester. But if you hold down right mouse button, you have all your selection types right here also. So you just move your cursor, right? Hold down right mouse button, move to object mode, right? You just move your cursor to object mode, highlight it. 
And we're back to object level. So we see that display, hide and show, can hide objects, show objects, hide faces, show faces. Um, but in this case, there's actually another way to do this, right? It's actually this button right here, but it also is in the show area, isolate select, right? And it's got some of its own options there if you want to. Usually the default isolate select works pretty well. Um, there's a quick key for it as well, right? Control one, um, but there's also a button right here, right? Um, you kind of see it looks like a, a, a cursor, like a mouse cursor and kind of a blue dotted box that's empty, right? It's kind of next to this kind of double white box that's kind of overlapping. It's that one right there. And when you click on that, you see how it becomes blue because it's a toggle. That means it's on. It's only showing that, right? So if I click back on it, it brings everything back. Now you could do this with multiple objects, right? So if I left click, remember, hold down right mouse button, object mode, left click on this one, it's green wireframe. If you hold down shift on your keyboard, the shift key, you can actually shift left click on the edge of the image plane. And you'll notice how they're both selected now. So shift is a great way to add to selections. Um, technically shift will also subtract, but control will subtract also. So um, you can think of shift as adding to selections, control is subtracting. Although technically shift will subtract also. Um, so you do have with shift and control the ability to add and subtract selections. Right. So in this case, I held down shift left mouse button just to click on that. And you'll notice that we now have two selections. Now you'll notice once we have multiple objects selected, um, most of the objects will actually now have a white wireframe and only kind of the most recently selected will have the green wireframe. So if you see green and white wireframes, don't freak out. That just means you have multiple uh, objects selected and that's fine. There's many times when you want to do that. So now if I go back to that little isolate select button right there, right? It's this one right there. I click on it, it becomes blue highlighted. And you'll notice we now only see this guy and this guy. Kind of cool, right? It doesn't get rid of those. It's not deleting them. It's just showing these guys. So it's kind of like a hide everything that's not selected feature. It's kind of cool. I like using it in Maya. But now that we kind of see that, you do have some hide and show features. And we'll talk about those more later on uh, the semester as well. But you also have isolate uh, select right here. Um, and that's how you can kind of control visibility. Uh, and there's even layers. We'll talk about layers later on the semester also, but that's one of the quick, easy ways to control visibility. Uh, isolate select, right? And that just gives you the ability just to see what you want to work on, right? So that way the other stuff doesn't necessarily get in the way. Um, so I'm just going to left click because we're still in object mode, right? Um, you can always kind of look over here, even if you're not using these as the buttons, because we'd rather use hold down right mouse button to do it. it this will tell you what you're in though. So you can always kind of look over there and see, oh, I'm in edit mode. Oh, I'm in face mode, right? Uh, so in this case, um, I actually do want to be in face mode, right? So I'll go to face selection right here. And uh, you'll see it's got the blue wireframes that indicates that. And what we want to do is we want to make a drawer inside this cabinet. So we still want the cabinet, but we also want a drawer inside of it. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this would be to use the extrude tool. And on this one, since it's only one drawer, and for you guys, you really should only do one drawer for this one, right? Uh, find an end table that's only got one drawer. You don't want multiple drawers. We're gonna do our desk on a later project this semester that will do multiple drawers. Um, technically, we could just extrude this face in um, and it wouldn't be too much of a problem. But there is a structural way to, to do it a little bit better. And I'm not really gonna fully explain it right now. Uh, when we get to the desk, I'll fully explain why we're doing that because right now there's just not enough context for it. But I want you guys to get in the habit of it. So in this case, I want you to kind of just um, Go with me on it, right? And I will explain it when we get to the desk uh, in a later project, um, which won't be that far from now, right? It'll be a couple weeks from now. Um, but uh, it's better to kind of put in edge loops to kind of avoid uh, certain structures, right? Certain edge loop structures. And it won't really matter that much on this one. Uh, it'll matter a lot more on our desk. Um, and I'll, I'll fully explain it there. But this also is gonna allow us to show you two important new tools. In fact, two of probably the most important tools. Bevel's quite important. Um, but there are two other tools that are really, really important. Um, one is multi-cut. And there is a quick key for that, Control shift x I'm probably not going to use that quick key, though, because that's kind of a quick key for my capture software also. Um, so there is a quick key for it. I encourage you guys to use the shortcuts, because that makes things even faster. Um, extrude is uh, Control e right? Um, so, uh, so yeah. And you go to here, edit mesh. You can see how extrudes Control e Mesh tools has multi-cut also. It's Control shift x but I want to go about and talk about the multi-cut tool, right? Now, the multi-cut tool is for adding what are called edge loops, right? And I'm going to add one in because that'll allow me to more specifically talk about exactly what an edge loop is. 
But suffice to say, it is largely what it sounds like. It is a loop of edges, right? Lines that go between points that go kind of uh, tail to head, right? End to end around in a loop, right? Edge loop. And you can actually add in edge loops really easily in pretty much all software nowadays. And that's what the multi-cut tool does. It actually does a couple of other things and we'll see that in later uh, projects. But for right now, we really just wanna add in a whole loop, right? So I'm gonna hold down control. So by default, multi-cut's kind of set to manual where you can manually draw in your edge loop or if you're off the object, you can slice, right? So if I just left click, you see I can kind of just draw an edge loop in manually. I don't wanna do that though, so I control Z to undo those. If I'm off the object, I can just left click, drag a line and it slices. We will use those on later projects, um, but they are kind of more, you only need them occasionally. Uh, what I'm about to show you of multi-cut is the one you're going to use a lot, like a lot, a lot. And that is if you hold down control, right? So we turn multi-cut on and then we hold down the control button, control. So when we hold down control on our keyboard, you'll notice when I put my cursor over an edge and you'll see how kind of whatever edge it is, right? Um, it'll want to put in uh, edges that go around in a loop perpendicular to that, right? So I can go kind of put an edge right here, boom. And then I can keep holding down control and I can left click down here to kind of put an edge there, boom. Now in this case, uh, we can do more precision with this if we wanted to. Um, for right now, um, probably the easiest way to do this is to hold down control shift, right? Um, in this case, you'll notice my multi-cut right over here has a snap percentage size. By default, it's set to 10%. But if you want to snap right to the middle, you can actually highlight snap percentage size, which should say 10 and make it 50. 50%. And when you hold down control, you say, oh, let's put an edge loop in, but if you hold down control shift, you'll notice that control shift allows you to put an edge loop in, but it snaps to just the snap percentage size. So when you click on multi-cut and modeling toolkit, you'll see it does have options down here, right? In a little slide uh, uh, kind of bar on the side here. Uh, in this case, snap percentage size, you can set it to 50. Uh, if you have it set to 10, uh, you'll notice it still will get you to the middle, but it, it kind of goes by units of 10, right? 10%. So it'll still get you to the middle, but you know, you might like having it just set to 50 by default because you're probably more often than not gonna wanna snap to the middle. So by holding down control and shift, you could snap exactly to the middle of um, that kind of uh, drawer casing. From there, what we can do is, um, then maybe we'll set this back to like 10%, right? So 10%. If I hold down control shift, Right, so hold on control. You see, I can kind of put an edge loop right here at the corner, but it's about 10% away from the corner. Click, and then go over here, still holding down control shift, right? So remember control lets you put the edge loop in and depends on kind of which angle um, you're facing from, right? Where it's gonna put it in. So remember, it kind of depends on the edge over and it's gonna do perpendicular. But holding down control allows you to put an edge loop in. Uh, and control shift allows it to snap to whatever the percentage, snap percentage size is. So control shift left click there and there we go. And I set my snap percentage size back to 10, right? So that way it kind of gave me those nice little things there. So that's how we can put edge loops in, right? Hold down control and you can put an edge loop in. If you hold down control shift, it snaps, right? And it'll do it based on the snap percentage size. But it does a set of edges that kind of go end to end in a loop, right? And you see what this does, it creates kind of this border for us, right? So there's this border here, but it does it with fewer stars, fewer five stars um, than other methods were, would. Um, this will become much clearer when we do the desk. For now, just go with it. Um, it'll become much clearer when we do the desk when we have multiple drawers and uh, the issue of certain stars comes up and it can make things act weird. On this one, it's not gonna matter that much, but it's a great way to introduce the multi-cut tool to you and already get you in the habit of thinking about building kind of certain structures like this. That's the multi-cut tool. Now, if I click on multi-cut to turn it off, um, what if I wanted to select an edge? Because I actually really wanted the edge loops kind of here to create these, but I don't really want this one here, right? Um, so how do I get rid of that? How do I get rid of an edge loop? And how do I select an edge loop, right? Multi-cut adds them. So if I hold down right mouse button, I can go to edge mode, right? So I go to edge selection. And if I double left click, Right, so it's a double click, but it's your left mouse button. So I double left click on an edge. And you see how it selects the whole entire edge loop. That's cool, isn't it? So you just double left click on an edge and it selects the whole entire edge loop. And then what we wanna do is we wanna delete that edge loop out. Now here's the problem though. If you hit delete on your keyboard, 
It looks like it did it, but you'll notice if I go to vertex selection mode, it leaves these vertices behind. And what that does is you'll now notice that this face, which looks like a quadrangle, it looks like it's only got four sides, doesn't. This polygon now actually has six vertices. So these polygons are all six-sided polygons, or what we call n-gons. N-gons are a bad polygon. Not always, but usually. And we'll talk about that and make that more clear later on. Now, if you wanted to, you could always just select these vertices and hit delete, and it'll get rid of them. And then you're back to all quads. We prefer quads. So guys, don't go around willy-nilly right now just creating a bunch of 10-sided polygons or triangles. Really try to keep these quads. And what is a quad? A quad is a polygon with four vertices or four sides. Squares are, are quadrangles. Rectangles are quadrangles, right? Quad is short for quadrangle, right? And I'll talk about this a little bit in our, our um, whiteboard lecture. Um, but we really want to work with quads. You should have a strong quad bias. The occasional triangle or n-gon, if used correctly, is fine, but we like to work primarily with quads. Um, and a quad is a four-sided polygon, a polygon with four vertices. Now I'm going to go back a couple steps. So I'm going to control Z to undo because you can actually take the edge loop out properly and not leave the vertices behind. But that is a specific tool in the edit mesh menu called delete edge vertex. And you notice it's got a quick key, control delete, control delete. And if you do delete edge vertex, what it does is it takes that edge loop out, but you notice how it does not leave the vertices behind. That's the way you really want to take edge loops out. Um, delete for regular faces or whole object is fine, right? Just hit delete on your keyboard. If it's an edge loop, you should really use edit mesh, delete edge vertex, or control delete. You really don't want those vertices hanging around creating a bunch of six-sided polygons. You did see though that you can always go back and select the vertices and hit delete and it just takes those out. So it's not that hard to fix, but we just want to get rid of that edge loop. It'll just make it a little easier to do what we're about to do. And it's great because now you can see how you select edge loops, right? Hold on, I'm also in edge mode double left click on an edge, it selects the edge loop. There we go. And then of course, control delete can take the edge loop out, so if you need to. So in this case, we now have strong, good structure for this cabinetry here. Now I wanna make the drawer come back, right? So I'm gonna to go to um, hold down right mouse button. So if you hold down right mouse button, it brings your selection tools up. I wanna pick face, and I just wanna select this one face right here, this one quad, right? Now, I don't wanna move this back. If I hit W for move and I grab the blue arrow, left, hold down left mouse button, blue arrow, it does move it back, but you see how it creates that weird stretching? So what we need is we need more geometry. We need this to kind of actually create new geometry as it's moving back. Now, this is where the extrude tool comes in handy. And the extrude tool is one of the best modeling tools ever. It's an awesome modeling tool. I, I joke, but I only half joke. If you're ever in any doubt for how to model something, extrude some faces. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm only half joking. That is not as far from the truth as you think it is. We have obviously a lot of other great tools and we're going to see those, but extrude's a powerhouse. Um, any kind of branched structure, and by branched structure, I mean like branches from a tree trunk, right? Um, think about animals, fingers, toes, legs, arm, all branch structures. Hint, hint, when we build our character later on, there's going to be lots of extruding out of faces to create arms, legs, fingers, toes. So what the extrude tool does when we use it is it actually will allow you to move that face kind of wherever you want to, but it will create new geometry in between where you move that face and the original geometry. So these faces right here that aren't selected will stay where they're at. This face will be moved back, but it'll create new geometry to fill in that area. That's what the extrude tool does. So I'm gonna click on extrude. And in this case, it's safe to grab the blue arrow for this, but you can always just hit W for your regular move tool and just grab the blue arrow there. But whenever you extrude, you always wanna move, right? It doesn't look like, so if I did it, you can click off and you go, oh, it didn't extrude. I'm gonna hit three, you don't need to know what three does yet, but you'll notice how there's actually extra geometry there, so don't hit three. Leave that alone for now. We'll talk about it much uh, talk about it later on, later projects. But you said there's actually is geometry there, right? So believe it or not, when you do an extrusion, it does automatically create geometry. Um, so in this case, I don't have to, Extrude again, it's already got that extrusion. I can just move this back, right? It's W for move, right? Grab that blue arrow. And you notice how the original geometry is still there. And that new face is, that original face is still there in the back, but there's new geometry created linking that, right? So this allows us to kind of create the cubby for where the drawer is gonna go. 
Now, at this point, what I want to do is I want to expand this single face selection here. Um, but that was just extrude, right? Uh, I'm going to go back a couple steps just to before I did it, just so you can kind of see once again. Okay, good, it's not there. Uh, so I just undid enough steps. So remember, grab that face, extrude. If you want, you can just grab the blue arrow by default here, move it back. But also just hitting W for move, you can move back. But the moment you click on that extrude button, it creates new geometry. So make sure you undo far enough back that it undoes the extrude proper. Uh, you think sometimes one extrude will undo it, it won't necessarily. If I undo this, it'll only move it back to the start. The extrusion's still there. So sometimes you have to do a couple of extrusions. But whenever you extrude, you should always move it at least somewhere. Even if it's not a lot, you should move it, right? You should always do something to the extrusion to make sure that the edge loops are not right on top of each other. That can cause weird problems later on. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to grow this selection. I want this selection to expand out to these grow. There's a tool for that. The select menu has what we call grow. And it has a quickie. You'll see it's kind of that little bracket, right? And you'll notice that's kind of right above alt um, and kind of right next to M, right? Uh, you'll see those kind of little bracket keys. Um, also, you see click comma and or, um, apostrophe and period, right? Or no, comma and period. Um, and that's what those quickies are. So shift comma and shift period grows and shrinks selection. So we hit grow, select menu grow, and you see how it actually took that selection and it grabbed all the ones next to it, growing or expanding that selection. Guess what shrink does? The exact opposite, it goes the other way, it shrinks it. And of course there's quick keys to that, right? Shift period, shift comma. So we can grow those. Now in this case, what I wanna do is I want to copy these polygons if off into their own object, right? So I want to copy these into their own object. So that way the drawer can be its own thing separate from the cabinetry that we can move in and out. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, right? In the Edit Mesh menu, because not everything's a modeling toolkit, right? Way down towards the bottom in the Edit Mesh menu is Duplicate. And we'll talk about Extract, not today, but in, in later projects. Duplicate will take just the faces you have selected and copy them. This is not the same as this edit duplicate, right? This edit duplicate is for duplicating a whole object. The edit mesh duplicate is for duplicating specifically selected faces that are not the whole object. So edit mesh duplicate. And you'll notice that we now have a green and a white wireframe indicating that there's multiple selections. So if I hit Q, right? Remember Q is your quickie for selection, it's right here. And then I hold down right mouse button to make sure I'm in object mode. Because sometimes it looks like it is, but it gets a little confused. And then we can hold down control, right? Control subtracts. In fact, you'll notice uh, my cursor has a little mess, mouse next to it, right? Hold down control and I left click on the white one, right? The outer one. Just so the drawer is selected. In fact, I could turn isolate select off, right? That little guy right there. And then since only that inner drawer is selected, I can click back on it again to just isolate select this, right? And you can kind of see how we did the drawer last, right? Because I want to get you guys used to, you know, creating some simple cubes, doing a little bit of shaping with them with the move and scale tools, put a bevel on them. This has got a little more going on, right? We're learning about isolate select. We're learning about uh, multi cuts and extrusions, which we're going to see these tons. So guys, you know, the first model is always toughest because you're learning stuff for the first time. And then, of course, we selected those faces that we extruded back through growing selection. Uh, and then, of course, we can duplicate those faces in their own. And, of course, we can turn isolate select off and on and just make sure that just this is selected. So I'll go back a couple steps just to re-show that. There we go. So right, you select that face in the back. Select, grow. So I'm just redoing it for you guys. Edit mesh, duplicate. I'm going to hit Q to go to my regular selection tool. And you notice how even though we were seeing the green and white wireframes, it kind of still thinks it's in face mode. So that's why I usually go hold down right mouse button, object mode. And then of course we can hold down control on the keyboard, control left click to deselect the outer one. So only the inner drawer is selected. And then of course we can turn isolate select off and then turn it back on again. So it's just showing this. And now what we can do is we can go to edge mode, right? Hold down right mouse button, edge. And I'm just going to grab an edge on this hole because you'll notice that there was no polygons there, right? There's actually a hole on the very front, right? There's no polygon there. How do you fill a hole in Maya? Because that's going to come in handy sometimes as you start to delete polygons and you want to build a polygon back in there. 
Well, Maya has a tool called fill hole for filling holes, right? So how do you fill a hole in Maya? You fill a hole. Uh, you do have to select an edge on the hole so it knows which edge to, uh, which hole to fill. And you go to mesh, fill hole. And what it does, you see how it creates a new polygon there. We need that because the drawer needs a front, right? And in this case, the drawer needs to be open on the top. That's what makes it a drawer. So we'll hold down right mouse button, go to face selection, select just this top face, remember just left click on it. And we can hit delete on our keyboard, delete. And now you see we have an actual drawer. It is paper thin, but it has an opening on the top and a front, sides and a back, like a drawer should have. Now, how do we make this not paper thin? Because this is another thing like the bevel tool, right? Things have thickness. So you should always thicken stuff um, unless there's a good reason not to, like, you know, a cape or a flag in a video game. Uh, it is so thin, in a paper, it's so thin that it's just not worth having extra polygons there. Um, and it's just a way to be more efficient. But much like bevel should be a good default unless there's a reason not to use it. Um, usually games or stuff's really far away. Um, you should have thickness on stuff unless there's a good reason not to. And there sometimes are good reasons not to, but it, it should be more of your default way of thinking that you should have thickness on stuff and it should have bevels on stuff. So how do we thicken in Maya? Well, we hold down right mouse button, right? Remember when you hold down right mouse button, it brings up your selection tools. And one of them is of course is object mode. So we go to object mode, so it's got that green wireframe again. There is no thicken tool in Maya. There is, but it's hidden. You'll go through here and you'll look for thicken and you're not gonna find it, right? It is actually hidden inside of another tool. So Maya does have thicken, it's just hidden inside of another tool. Now, you do wanna be in object mode, right? Hold that right mouse button, object mode. Because this tool already does something super, super useful. And we've actually already seen it, it's the extrude tool. But if we just extrude a couple of faces, it extrudes normally, which is 95% of the time what we want. However, if you have the object selected or every face selected, which object mode selects the whole thing, all of the polygons, it'll know, oh, it's really, really likely you want to thicken. So hold on right this one to be, make sure in object mode, make sure wireframe is green. And if we extrude in object mode, this will allow us to thicken. Now, you'll notice when we do this, it brings up this manipulator, right? Uh, sometimes you might see it as just a blue arrow and a light blue square. That's fine. That's actually still giving you all the really important stuff anyways. Now, in this case, normal direction is something we haven't really talked about that much yet. And we'll talk about it a little more in our lectures. But normal direction, simply put, is the direction a face is pointing, right? So this face right here is pointing that direction. This face right here is pointing this direction. This face right here is pointing that direction, right? That's your normal direction. And you notice by default in Maya, particularly when this manipulator comes up, when you're doing extrude to thicken, the blue arrow, right? So there's a blue square that's for scale. The arrow's for move, just like it is with the move rate in scales. The blue arrow allows you to move these faces along their normal directions. And this is super useful for thickening. So if I left click drag on this blue arrow inward, you'll notice these faces are all moving in according kind of to their normal direction. Remember the normal direction is just the way the face kind of looks or points. And see, I see how those kind of all kind of go kind of in. And now you see we have thickness. So I can hit Q to you know, turn the tool off. But remember, object mode, extrude, grab that blue arrow, move it to kind of thicken it. Now in this case, it needs bevels. So we'll hold down right mouse button to go to edge mode. And we'll select these edges, select all of them, bevel. In this case, the fraction's already a pretty good size. So I'll just give it some segments, three. Hit Q to turn this off. And we can go back to object selection, right? Hold down right mouse button, object mode. And we can turn our isolate select off. And now you'll see that I actually have a drawer that can come out. Now in this case, you'll notice how I kind of probably should have maybe put those a little further in, <laughs> right? Um, that's fine, you guys just be careful when you're doing yours, right? Kind of um, maybe put it in a little further um, so that you actually see the full proper extent of it. Um, in this case though, I'm fine because I'm the teacher and it's the concept, <laughs> right? Um, but of course we can you know, select the outer cabinet, turn isolate, select off of that, hold down right mouse button, edge mode, select all the edges, and we can do a bevel on this one too. And you notice the fraction's actually a pretty good size for those. We'll just do segments, 
three, maybe turn the fraction of 0.4 a little smaller. And of course, Q will turn that to off. Hold down the right mouse button, go to object mode, turn isolate select off. And now that has bevels as well. Um, obviously, you might want to make sure that you know the kind of you can see the sides there, right? So maybe maybe when you do your multi cut, make it a little further in, <laughs> right? So uh, so keep that in mind um, as you're modeling that. All right. So really, this is kind of like a lot of the major concepts I wanted you guys to see for this uh, in terms of how you model stuff. Um, usually, your handles will be kind of these little simple kind of uh, kind of circle knobs, right? Um, so you could easily, if you wanted to, just you know, create a polygon primitive. Um, kind of looks like a sphere of mine. So I'll just create a sphere. Maybe hit R for scale. Scale it down a bit. W for move. Move it up. R for scale again, right? And in this case, I feel like that should be a little bit. I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna delete that. So I'm gonna go to create um, polygon primitive sphere options box. In this case, I'm gonna make this a little simpler. We'll kind of do uh, 12 by 12. Enough that it'll look pretty nice and round, if not too much. There we go. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. Number R for scale. And you can grab that center one to scale the whole thing down. W for move, move it forward. And of course, I can move it up on the green. Uh, if you have an object selected or any faces selected and you hit F, That'll do frame selection, which zooms your camera in and frames your selection, right? So F is great, it frames your selection, F. Um, in this case, I kind of probably need this to be a bit of squash sphere, so I'll hit R for scale, maybe squash it in a little bit that direction. And it probably has a kind of more of a cylinder backing, right? So one of the things we could always do, you know, F on the object selected. I can hold down right mouse button, right, for face selection. I could left click drag my box, right? Just to select those, make sure it's kind of an even selection on, around the whole thing. And I could delete that, right? Hit delete on your keyboard. And then we can go to edge selection mode, right? Hold down right mouse button, edge. Select this edge right here. Mesh fill hole, right? We already saw this earlier. So this is a great way to get a little practice at this stuff. Fill that hole. And then of course I can hold down right mouse button, go to face selection, grab that face. And what I can do to actually make this back part of it a cylinder, I could extrude. And instead of moving right now, I could hit R for scale, right? And remember, these handles will scale along one direction, but that light blue one in the center, when you left click drag on it, scales everything in. So this could be a great way to make this smaller. And then I can do extrude again, W for the regular move tool, move it on the uh, blue axis backward. And you said we took a sphere and turn it kind of into a mushroom shape. Now, the only other thing we wanna do really quick here is maybe move this up a little bit, because you guys can just eyeball this for this project. Um, I'll show you more precision snapping later on, uh, things like snap vertex and things like our snap together tool. Particularly when we get to our desk, I'm gonna really show that stuff off. Um, but I really wanna make sure to give you enough things to have good tools, but not overwhelm you with too much. Um, the last little thing is the fact that this is um, kind of um, faceted looking, where these aren't. It kind of looks like they're all kind of separate polygons. If you just go to object mode and select the object, you can go to mesh display, and there's something called soften edge. Um, and what this does is it's gonna actually gonna blend the normals between those polygons to kind of collectively shade it so it looks smooth without adding geometry. So I'll do mesh display soften edge. And you notice how it kind of it gets rid of that faceted look without adding geometry. And we'll talk about it more as we go on this semester also. But that will give you your end table.